the channel. So today I have a very special, very, very dear person to me, Pastor Messi Lawa. She's on YouTube here. I'm going to put her details. And I, I want to, first of all, let me tell you how I met Pastor Messi. So when I was, when I was in Lagos, um, we we're going to um, TLC, it was a church close to our house. So whenever we can go to our main church, we'll go there. So um, I think we were in choir then and all of that. And she was so young then, then at that time. And there was a time that I started um, there was this female ministry that I had and I remember then God gave me ten people's names and it was like Pastor Messi was the first person she then she was not even a pastor there she was she was in Pastor Messi now she was just Messi and I wrote down her name and but I, I want her to talk about her journey from starting on Wasa because she used to have this just to do that thing. <laughs> this WhatsApp um, ministry. In fact, I'm talking too much. You guys, please meet Pastor Messi. All right. Hey, everybody. So good to be here. Thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like to be called Pastor, but I mean, um, <laughs> that's what I like to call us. So just permit me for this stream. Thank you so much, Mark, for inviting me. Oh, okay, my journey. Hmm. Okay, I started out as a music minister. I, I actually thought that everything I'm going to do is my life music ministry. In fact, if you asked me that time, I would give you scripture, Psalm 67. I can see that scripture from my head, Psalm 7, 67. Let the people praise me, let God praise me. Then shall the earth yield and increase. Our God shall bless us, and the ends of the earth shall fear him. So this scripture was like my anchor scripture, you know. I, I was know very, about this. <laughs> oh, very passionate about, you know, letting people praise God, so I was, yeah, and truly, if you were under my administration at the time, you know that I was very dedicated, I, I sure. took praise sessions, not like, um, like I just wanted to lead, but I took it as though I was fulfilling ministry, even if I was doing it in choir, whether I was doing it outside of my church, I was always doing it with that impression that I was leading people in a prophetic, wow. uh, I always make praise sessions for prophetic. And this all started when I was in school actually. When I was in school, I started to like, praise me. You went to Covenant. Yes. Covenant. 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 This is a new what is for Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So when I was in school, I would do only during exams, 6 a.m. in the morning, I would do praise sessions. Like under open heavens, no mic, no sound, no just by yourself. No, not by myself. I invited. Oh, people. okay. And we grew to like 170, 180 people. And I would lead praise like under open heavens that it got the attention of the chaplain of the school. That right? what would happen? Like people would not want to come for chapel service, but these people are rushing to come for the praise. praise session. And it's wow. 6 a.m. in the morning, so people are still sleeping. And it is the exam period when people are supposed to be reading. Really. But you still see a lot of people trip out in the morning coming out to praise God. And we had massive testimony. So I somehow that also made me feel like ah this praise thing is just it. I'm not doing anything other. In fact, I told some of my members, my team members at the time, I said, see, anytime I come and tell you that I want to be a pastor, just know that I'm about sleep. <laughs> This phrase is everything. everything. But then I got to realize that we know in parts and what we do you give you your vision in parts to the extent that you can you know accommodate at the time and then when you fulfill that and you get to that level where you need to step up, God begins to expand. Right? So when I finished school, I just started a worship meeting every one or third, third Friday of the month is the vigil as well, praise. And um, that's how I got started. And then one day I was um, I was struggling to get a job after I came what back. What year was this? It's 2013. 2013. So I was struggling to get a job. <laughs> It was not I like I have all the connect, I have all the like brains that too. I'm not done now. Why am I doing the job? And then God said, because you left what I told you to do, I'm like, okay, so what's it? Because initially when I finished school, I, I was not even doing anything about my praise ministry. I was just focused on getting a job and settling like oh my god, say go back. So I started praise ministry. 
But in the midst of the praise, God, um, one of the days I told my pastor, Pastor Samuel, to in this church that I spoke about, talking about, I said, um, Sir, I want you to come and you know, pray over our 70 years at that time of the praise ministry. Okay. Because I started in 2000. This was different from the WhatsApp. No, this is I'm not going to start the WhatsApp. Wow. So I told Pastor Samuel to come and um, pray over pray the praise And then he said, Mercy, go and pray very well. I don't think this is what God is asking you to do. I preached to him. You know, imagine you preaching to a pastor. <laughs> I said, ah, you know, you know, that God has told me is praying. I was like, okay, I will come on one condition. Go back and can pray about it again. And just tell God that God give me clarification if it is praise. Yeah. So I was like, I told him thank you. Then I went back. Meanwhile, I had made up my mind because of some certain experiences that I don't want to share online. That I didn't want to do ministry anymore. Like, I didn't want to go to not commit to any ministry. Anything of the ministry. Child, don't leave me. You know, let me speak pigeon small. <laughs> just leave me alone. Let me just be praising and worshiping. But please don't come into it. Let's do short. Let's do anything like that. I don't want. And my reason is because I've been beating at it. I just felt that space is not for me. I remember. I don't want yeah, yeah. to. I don't want to. So, but my pastor was just very convinced that. Praise was not what God wanted me to do, God wanted me to step out. So another time came and then he said, Mercy, God told me you're supposed to be pastoring, but I don't know whether you're supposed to pastor under me or you're supposed to start your own body. But I need you to pray about it. You see, the moment he told me that thing, I drew far from him. Like, I intentionally started avoiding him because I don't want to hear ministry or anything. Like that. But I got to have it, I became more this. It was so uncomfortable. I was like, what's going on now? I'm not getting how many anyway. Marketplace wise. I mean, I was like, what's happening there? We had a 21 day fast. We usually have a 21 day fast every August in TLC. And we ended three days fast in redemption camp. Yeah, is it like camp meeting? Yes, like a camp, camp meeting. meeting. And then we went to that camp meeting that year and Pastor invited another guest minister to be a part of the meeting. And for some reason, they started praying for everybody. They were and laying hands. I was avoiding that man. So <laughs> <laughs> I was <laughs> next to <laughs> him. I don't know those things. And I thought we were going to go to my church. I had to go to the man. And the man didn't even lay hands on me. His name is Pastor Emmanuel Johnson. He said, See all your head, and that was they are giving you a special assignment, and you must fulfill that assignment. You don't find me rich. I think many people are really following me. I think the man said, Because if you're going to start now, don't delay me more. I said, How about this? So I repented. I said, Don't worry, okay, God, I'm sorry. I'm going to make it. So I went back to the south. I do want some time, but I said, Oh, thank God for the life that you have missed it. I'm like, you know, said, you don't give me a book, the assignment by my Timodoc told me to read it. And then I commenced like a 40 day fast to give clarity as to what God wanted me to do. And then that's how I started in October. In fact, that period, I could discern everything God was oh, saying. I think I came for your yeah. ordination. Yeah. What one um, studio? studio? Yes, yeah. GPK Studios. Yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah, GPK yeah, Studios. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this was February 21st, 2016. Oh, that's so, well, that's on my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so, February 21st, 2016, we started the GPK Studios. Um, and then that was when the wisdom for WhatsApp, WhatsApp. Um, oh. program started. So we were doing the WhatsApp meeting as our midweek. Okay, then having then we we're having some services. Sunday services. Oh. And those WhatsApps were really very uh, impactful. Yes. Yes. But I know you used to host different, different people. Yes. 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 Wow. And I think that 
maybe we should we should go back. <laughs> Because truly, we we had influence around the world at that time. Sure, there were people from other countries. Yeah, you know, we had up to, at that time. I think we had more than two hundred people mm -hmm. on your WhatsApp. Yes, we used to be, and mm -hmm. the engagement was yes. always very, 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 very. I mean, I think we should go back. <laughs> So let, let me ask you a question. I, I remember there was a time you now relocated to Bando. Yes, I relocated to Bando. What was that season like? Okay, so I had um, so I was in Lagos for one year, only one year. GPK studio within one year. After the first year, I became very uncomfortable again. Like I was not in the right place. When because we used to pay six thousand euro per year in that place. And what it mean cost the front runs for it was that GPK we were moving out of that place. And then I had already grown my members around that place. And I'm like, what's going on? This is just one year. Am I going to start moving all these people away? I don't have any other thing. And then when I became so trouble, I went to my pastor and told my pastor that I don't know what's happening here. I don't want to leave or back. But this studio wants to leave or back. So my pastor said, take out three days. Fast and pray, and then go tell you when. That period was period where there was one week. It was January that year. So, and that one week, at that time, it was you know, like now that they do one week, that time it was like long. I think it was like two weeks. Exactly. <laughs> so, I did the last three days of one week, I now went for one week. And they were, I just kept saying, God, just give me direction. Just give me direction. I remember, as for time, to pray on this time was the first person that put and like in the session the last day he just kept saying when god is sending you to ibado when god is saying when he finished pastor called you came he said hey, let's do something and he's here to mention ibado like five of these speakers that day when you're saying something like god is sending you to ibado i said what kind of problem so i called one of my friends with me i said with me god said i should come to ibado he was necessary President, like, okay. like, uh, Papa, well, Papa, 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 so he called the current person and said, see, I have a friend who's coming to start working in Ibadan. You should give her the right card to finish him. And that's how I went to Ibadan with one box and tears in my eyes, telling God, God, I'm a graduate. I mean, <laughs> at this time, I'm not like, one of my uncles had told me, I told you, that before now, when I told you, I wanted to miss you, that I was foolish. But now that I say I'm going to Ibadan, I'm stupid. <laughs> that is that I'm very stupid. That can't I go and be doing for something? Who oh, dares to be pastor? But I had the conviction, and I thank God for my mom and my sister. She would have always believed in what God is going to do from the day one. Then I as well. Her only concern was how are you going to survive in a place where you know nobody, where you know nothing. Wow, and you're not from Ibadan. Like, no, I'm from Ibadan. Wow. I've never been to Ibadan. Like, For that time, I've never been there. So it was such a missionary journey. I'm like, I think that's the best way to describe it. Missionary journey. I like the one box. I can't remember. I can't forget. I one box and I was I cried all through the journey until I got to Ibadan. I'm like, God, what, 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 <laughs> what am I supposed to be doing in this place? But I don't know, I had a classmate, her name is Nipimi, whose parents were missionaries and they lived in Ibadan. So when she heard that I was in Ibadan, she actually, she and her family accommodated me for like 11 days, like two weeks, just for me to be able to find my foot in her back and get a place, get a direction. But I just, initially I went there because I wanted to pray over the direction, I knew yes. what direction, but where God was going to plant the church. And then I visited like this year a few times and I got my own place. And that's how I was in Ibadan. You know, after Ibadan, yes. how long did you stay in Ibadan? Two years. Was it two years? Wow, then you came to Abuja. Tell us that story. Ah. <laughs> do, do you know what I want to tell? You know, a lot of people don't realize that when you are following God, then it's like this. Yeah. It's, it's never a straight line. Yeah. <laughs> do you understand? Today you may be so sure that this is what God is. This is where God. Then midway is like, 
change because and a lot of people I don't know, they are not malleable enough to realize that. Just follow God, let them talk to God. Tell us when you came to Abuja. <laughs> okay, so um, I got to Bradom. I started to work. You work on Prosper to a reasonable extent. At the time, um, you know. Please subscribe to her channel, okay? I'm yeah. going to put it on the screen <laughs> and in the description box and repeat comments, okay? Thank you. So, um, it became, at some point, it became increasingly difficult to manage myself in the apartment because now I don't have any pay employment. And ministry, this kind of ministry that I believe that God has called me to is to reach the unreached. So I do not believe in transfer membership. So I try to go out to look for people who are downtrodden, they don't have a direction, and begin to repeat the word of God into them. That's exactly what I was doing in my And then I was attracting people who do not have. <laughs> they, in fact, you are the one that will feed them, you are the one that will close them. I say, I know people who say that, oh, pastors are making money. <laughs> like, how? I never had one particular family, I can't forget your family ever in my life. The man had five boys. And the wound, his wife left him. They were actually not even Christians, they were Muslims. And for some reason, one of my members invited one of the boys to the church. And the guy was like, was so interested in the Christian faith and all. And then after a while, he started to tell his family that he's going to this church. The brothers started coming. But they couldn't go to school, they didn't have food. They got to a point, I didn't have a job. But all of them were coming to my house every mm -hmm. morning, so I ate as pastor. <laughs> and I'm like, God, they don't have to provide. And then at some point, they all couldn't go to school. In fact, I had to raise funds online that period to pay their school fees. But what interesting thing happened, even after I got into Abuja, one day I got a call from that particular boy, his name is Aki. And he said, Pastor, please send me a crown of my to give you a seat. I'm like, Aki, how? How? <laughs> He said, well, Mercy, you don't know how much you impacted into my life. Nobody believed in us. I didn't boy, you paid my school fees. Now I'm in school because of you. Because you allowed me to write my YIQ, pay for my YIQ. I'm like, I can't give him a seat. And then, like, from where and how? He said, well, Mercy, you don't just know. I'm in school today only because you believed in me. You, you went out of the way to look for our school fees. I paid for himself and his two brothers. They were three. I paid for and I'm like, okay, now this is ministry. That's because I hear Bishop Boy always say that the testimony, the proof of ministry is the testimony of change lives. So the proof of ministry is not about how much attendance that one or the Sunday morning, even though that's important at the level, you know, but the proof of ministry is that certain lives are changed and transformed mm. and for me that day it was such a joy that this is Ibadan when I went to with my one trolley I have one in box that I was crying but see after I've left the place see how many people can say because you came that's why I have this before so if all of my two years in that place was because of only Aki I believe that um, yeah, it's, it's just like they'll tell you the story of the person who uh, led Pastor Kumi to Christ. Doesn't even have a church. Do you know that? He doesn't even have a church. I think he was just a normal member. But he, he, he was the one that led Pastor Kumi to Christ, who has billions, it's not even millions, billions of people that come to Christ. So that, that one person can. You know, we just don't know. So for me, the testimony of Aki, till tomorrow, if they anniversary or something and they want people to do video, if you ask Aki, Aki will be so soldier. Till today is a Christian born again. Like this is one soul I know I can go to and be sure. <laughs> like I it was a conversion, they were pure Muslims with Muslims before they met us and I was able to walk in through. And like I said. If Aki is the only proof, of which he is not the only proof of my ministry, but if Aki is the only proof of my ministry in that two years period where I was in the I think mm -hmm. I did ministry there. So, so, so 
I want to ask you a question. I remember when you came to Abuja, mm -hmm. you were so conflicted. Yes. You know, you remember yes. you said in my house, yes. 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 you were so, she did not want to leave the party of Abuja. She didn't want to leave the party of Abuja. I don't remember what of the mouse that talked to you that time. I can't even remember. <laughs> like, everyone was like, ah, Messi, this. This opportunity yeah. that you have is a once in a lifetime opportunity. <laughs> okay. Talk to us about, about that. Okay. okay. So yes, we got to a crossroad. But at this time, all this period I was doing this thing, I was not in the with my biological father. My father is not a Christian and I still trusting God for his conversion. But um he wanted me to work, to do something to make sure I was working. But I was so convinced that it was full time <laughs> ministry I wanted to do. So he did not talk to me throughout the period. And I was feeling good myself. I'm bearing the marks of Christ. I'm doing the work of the ministry. Until one day my pastor called me and said, to me, listen to me. Go and consign with your father. And I told him one thing. If I have to consign with my father, I will have to stop ministry. For me, one thing is needful that my heavenly father is more important right now. He said he knows that my heavenly father is important, but then God puts us in. He, he always sends us two people for a reason. He now said one thing that I can't forget in life. See, my pastor is one of the people that I don't joke with in life. <laughs> because for every time that I've been at the crossroad, he has been the one that God has used his instruction to give me clarity. So having people that you can meet at a crossroads. Yes, very key. So he told me, he said, I'm a spiritual father, and if this decision is wrong, let it be on me. He said, God will always allow your, your, um, um, it is always a field that always reduces. Mm -hmm. So he said, go and take that job. If it is in the will of God for you, the job will not affect the ministry. Mm -hmm. But if it is not in the will of God, your dad will try. But he will not be able to give you that. Mm -hmm. So that day I went back home. He called me from Ibadan to come to meet me in Lagos to only to have this conversation. And then when I got back to Ibadan, I called my father and said, I'm sorry for you know disobeying all this while I'm ready to do anything. And he said, Yeah, hey, now you are ready, now you are ready. See, you waited five years because at this time. I graduated five years. He had all the connections to put me in a job, but I refused. So, and he kept trying every year, and I kept refusing. Because I felt that this was the path. So, when I went back home, I prayed, I prayed, I called my father with the impression that it will work. But as God you have in that same period, there was an opening in my office that I work right now. And Immediately my dad asked for it. He said, send my CV. I sent my CV in less than two weeks. He said I should come and write the exam. I came both the exam. See, I can assure you I did not prepare for the exam. I and I intentionally did not prepare for the exam. So like you said. <laughs> I did not prepare for the exam. But guess what? I did not say this. <laughs> I was like, what kind of problem is this? They called me after two weeks and then now, by the time I came to write exam, when I came back, I refused to prepare the minds of my members that I was going to do anything because I kept telling myself it will not work. So I didn't tell my members anything. I kept, you know, about, I just kept telling them that, you know, if anything happens to your pastor, just make sure that you're all still coordinated. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, but I didn't tell them that I was doing anything. And then I remember, I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth because it's, fine. it's very important for me that transition. That transition was one of the biggest for me. But I started praying about it in my secret place and said, Thank God. At this point, I don't even want this decision to be about what my spiritual father said, mm -hmm. or what my biological father said. Mm -hmm. I want this decision to be my decision so that no matter what happens there, I'm here to take responsibility for whatever I need here because I, I, I cannot be too sure that if I go there, everything will just go perfect. All over. And then God, right from the word go, from the very first time I started hearing God, God had told me that I was in the world and generation. Remember, you started the world, and I kept telling you that <laughs> this is this one thing that I'm, I'm involved in because. 
that name resonates with me as a person. And then God told me, go back to Judges 4. I'm going to read the word. Mm -hmm. This was the first time in my life I was going to see the word and that like the Bible introduces the word and Judges 4 for us. Deborah herself, a prophetess, her calling. The wife of Rabidus, she was married. She judged Israel at that time. That was not a ministerial work. That was a governmental work. And, the, 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 and the, it was for a time. It was not all to her life. But she judged Israel at that time. So there was a time in her life where she needed to take up governmental role. And then God said, and if you have to take up governmental role, you must rise up the ramp. He doesn't just come on you. So he said, I'm sending you there. Go back there. Now, the time when I wrote the exam was when I was with you, when I was still confused. And I didn't have that clarity as to if it was God that wanted me to be there or it was. But by the time I prayed, and God said, See, Deborah, a prophet, the wife of God, because she trusts Israel at this time. So he, he said, You will go there for a season. When you get there, when the time for what I want, I'm sending you in there. When that time comes, you will know that this is exactly why I sent you into the system. And once that assignment is done, you come back and do So that gave me relief. However, I don't have to put something. <laughs> I said, so I'm going back to Abuja. But if I, by any means, will not hear you say, start the church, I will understand. Yeah. So I came into Abuja in 2015 and I didn't start to church on the day Wow. Yeah. And if you ask me, I was comfortable. I joined, I went to Kosa. <laughs> I was going to Kosa. Nobody knew me there. I didn't join one first. I didn't do anything. I was just attending and I was very committed in attending. In fact, one of my associates, my very close, my closest associate was with me. We were both going to Kosa together. And I was not feeling bad or anything. I said, God, if I will hear you clear, and if I'm not sure like this in my ear that this is where you want me to be, I will want to be. Because I don't want to be pastoring on that thing just because everybody expects me. I know how many people called me at the time. I was like, mm -hmm. what are you, uh, why, as in why are you not pastoring? What was happening? What was and I told you, I don't know. Because the last time I, 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 oh sorry, the last thing I want to do to myself is meet up to people's expectation of me at the expense of what God wanted me to do at the time. So I told God that I'm all here, when you are ready, let me know, I will start. But until then, I will not. And so, I just did itinerant ministry all through that period. If you invited me, I will go preach. But I. Yeah, you are organizing a worship. Yes, yes. Yeah. No, that was an birthday. Okay, was it was just day? one time. Oh, okay, okay. So I just organized it. And in fact, that was where all of the. Some of, one of my team members right now actually came in to that worship meeting. Wow. One of my strongest team members in the church right now. It was because I just did. I just said, okay, my 30th birthday, let me just, you know, worship God and all of those things. And, I had people come in with worship and um, we, we, I just said that uh, it was a, like a major big thing that I didn't want to just have it like that. That same year, I celebrated my third year meeting by the July of that year. Uh, by, so it was by, I think it was May that God started to move me again and said, I should start preparing to start church. As usual, I'm going to start the work 40 days fast, it's compulsion. So we did 40 days fast myself and a few people around me that I had spoken to. And then that's how we started with Namja. But I didn't start with Namja just because I came to Namja. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so then, as, as a female yeah. in ministry, <laughs> what the year? Because when she started ministry, she was really very young. Yeah, yeah, 20. Yeah. Then, and <laughs> I think I was 23. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> starting the ministry at that age as, as a female, as a woman, <laughs> what are the lessons you've learned? Because somebody may be watching this now and she's not sure. Okay. Because they told that you woman will. <laughs> I don't want say the truth that. You want to start church. Because you're not, 
Yes, yeah, so I remember truly, truly when I had the call the, before Lagos now, when I was still fasting, and I spoke to a few male ministry figures, and the answers were amazing. <laughs> One of them told me, Are you engaged? I said, No, no, he said, Just to make sure that area is so dead first for you to go into the church. I'm like, Really? Another person said, I can't remember, but I know that there were people who had reservations that mighty, I don't know what to call them, but they are great men of God. I, I still respect them to today, but I knew they were not correct about this particular one. Until I met Pastor David Lelipo, not special, but Pastor David Lelipo, that's the son. And I spoke to him about my concerns and how what people had said. And one of the things I remember him saying to me clearly was that mercy. If you don't start this work and you are waiting for your spouse, what if you get married and the person tells you I didn't yes. marry you as the pastor? That is better you go and obey God and then let the person meet you doing what you are doing. And if the person meets you, the person knows that this is what I'm signing up for and the person can be the God. And that's exactly what happened. The person that eventually got married was somebody that was already inside my church. So if I did not start the work, only God knew that I'm married by now still. Maybe I would have still been waiting for the person. And God is like, I'm waiting for you. You are like, I'm waiting for God. And God is like, see, I would because the truth is, this thing makes more sense to me now than when it was um, at that time. Let me say something because of what you said. One of the questions I asked God during the 40 day fast I had before my first before planting the first church in Lagos was that who was going to marry me because of all these questions. I asked God and God gave me a clear scenario from scripture that I can't forget. Now, note that everything I'm saying, I'm always taking it back to what God told me, what God told me. So what God is telling you may be what, what yes. He has told me. Yeah. But one thing that you should always know is that if you always rely on the instruction of the Holy Spirit by time, that's not to say you don't make mistakes sometimes, but then it limits the amount of mistakes that you have to make. Let me ask a very practical question. When, um, as a pastor, a woman, you have emotions. Yeah. So, <laughs> how, 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 because in as much as some people would not want to date a lady in ministry, there are some people who are drawn to a woman yeah. that is prominent. Yeah. Yeah. And because they see that, oh, she's a star, mm. she's mm. out there, I want this one. I didn't know that. So, so it's two questions in one. How are you able to deal with your emotions okay. and not like um, derail during that season? Yes. And secondly, did you meet people who wanted to take advantage of the stardom? Okay. Um, I, as a, as a rule, I don't like to speak ill of people. So, um, I would not say that these guys were there because of the prominence. Okay. I would not say that because I'm not their half. But what transpired between us, we can, we can deduce. Uh, let me just say, Pastor, she would not say it. <laughs> <laughs> we can deduce. I say, okay, some of them were there because of what they thought to gain, they will get out of it. Yes, some of them, and that's 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 my deduction. That may not be the intention, but that's my deduction. No, you're talking to sisters <laughs> now. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry about. Because, see, some people don't have this kind of, and I don't know why I'm even going with this kind of. Yeah. Some people don't have anybody to understand conversation with. Yeah. So this just just okay, just okay. okay. So yes, yes, the people come around. In fact, when they see that they are single, oh, pastor. In fact, even. In my parents, church, somebody reliably told me that there was a particular guy that came simply because he heard I was a single person. <laughs> and the guy was angry after he discovered I was getting married. <laughs> so there are people like that. So um, of course it happened. And how do I manage my emotions? Let me know. Now I'm not going to tell you I'm a lot of oh, do you understand? I have feelings, I have emotions, there are people I like. In fact, they you know that. I dropped my some of my um, standards 
so a couple just to say oh, let them not say she's not because, right. because they know at some point he was looking as though it's uh, maybe I was too proud I couldn't submit to a man so sometimes I'll just bend more and say okay let me just allow it because and I'm sure there's somebody watching it and that's what you're doing get out get out of that game they say you should get out <laughs> if it's not the standard of God when you just get out I, I don't try to manage it but let me quickly speak to that I had many failed relationships many but because I was never public about my relationship life it was not obvious now that's wisdom for somebody Sure. Don't it's not every good thing. It's not every day. You're gonna be good. That was why you're a pastor. <laughs> you're so a general guy. <laughs> and he's seriously <laughs> like <laughs> application. <laughs> because the truth is, I see a lot of people do a lot of funny things on social media and then when they wake up with this person, it's difficult for them to I mean you're not like ah, what people think about me. But the truth is I had many different relationships, like I said, but many people did no. not find out because I was never public about one relationship. Never. Even to the one I'm currently in. I am not public about it. Why? There are certain things called your private, private life. And they must remain private. Except you are a marriage counselor, or both of you are now in ministry together. And hey, because there are people that they are going to speak to, God has been there in ministry together. And hey, both of you can now say that. In, and that one is at, after you are married, not before you are married. Before you are married, everybody work as individuals. When you are married and it is official, like, like everybody has now recognized your husband and wife, you cannot begin to throw all the pictures on social media, do anything you want. Even with that, I feel like the, I just yes. just my personal mm-hmm. I feel that like there should be wisdom, yeah, um, applied to everything because, um, it's not what that also <laughs> exactly. Me, I'm a very social media person, yeah. but I can bet you don't even know. <laughs> One tenth of what is going on is what yeah, I want to do. Sometimes there's some things I'll post, maybe after six months they go. <laughs> hey, it's just wisdom. It's yeah. the, it's, it's not... So so I didn't put my I didn't put any of those things on social media at all. So you can never you can go to any of my Facebook posts or Instagram and find any relationship there. You cannot, and I strictly post to a strictly ministry and what I wanted people to. And please take that one as a that, that's why many people did not know about, but I had flaws yet. Now, let's go back to what God told me about my marriage. He said to me, He said, What you are carrying, or that, not, not like a baby now, what you are betting now, mm-hmm. this church is your brainchild, not necessarily your physical child, that's your brainchild, that's your, your spiritual child. You, anyhow you want to put it. He said, see yourself like a male. God did not speak to our husband first. God got the took her permission first to bet Jesus to her. And that's exactly what happened with you now. He said, but when the husband that is supposed to marry comes and he discovers that you are pregnant with this child, he will not push you away. He will try to, he will attempt to push you away. But I will go and intercept him and tell him that he is your husband. And that statement stayed with me. He said, Joseph accepted Mary not because she tried to convince him. Joseph accepted Mary because God told him that that's your wife. Said number one, he'll be able to hear from me and be able to follow my instructions that's god's instruction then number two it will not be because you convinced him or you tried to persuade him to stay it will be out of his own condition that he will be so sure that you are the one that is his wife he said when you meet that person you know you wow. see so god told me this in 2016 and it took seven years I came to pass before he played out. Many other guys came, and the truth is, I dated some of them because some of them will look like it. Yeah, when I tell you, yes, they will look like it. But yeah, one thing, thing <laughs> <of them. laughs> one thing that see, the truth is, one thing I never did in my life that I never begged any guy to stay, mm-hmm. and it was not right. It's not right. It is that I knew exactly what God told me to look out for in a man. And the moment I began, to, I, it, it started to look like I was 
begging him to stay. I was already breaking one of the rules, or I was already falling short of one of the instructions that I was giving. That I would not be the one to convince him to stay. It was that was the job of the Holy Spirit, not my job. So that thing, even though I had few relationships, that one was one thing I was always looking for. If, I'm not saying that if I offend, if we have issues, no, no, we must resolve. Uh, yes. But when he begins to look like, oh, the person is now saying, man, if you don't do that, I will, stay, I will go, ah, please go. <laughs> <laughs> I beg you, Lord God. Well, because, go. it, because when he feels that you are desperate. Yes, yes, yes. He was now getting to the point where he was like, ah, eh, she is not the dumb dead thing. She is not the final one. No, no. So, I'm telling you, joke because mm-hmm. there's there's someone I know that anytime I think about it I just bust out and cry. I don't listen to messaging a mm-hmm. lot mm-hmm. because that lady sings exactly like mm-hmm. messaging. Mm-hmm. Serious. I, I anytime I hear messages I'll just start crying because I'll remember her. And the story she wasn't even up to 30 then no. Mm-hmm. But she was putting so much pressure on herself that oh I need to get married, I need to get married. So eventually she got married. The story is that I know it's going to, well, but she's dead right now. Okay. Yeah. And whenever I think about the lost resources, mm-hmm. because she was such a beauty, loves God. And that's, you can love God and make mistakes yeah. in this area. Especially when you think, oh, people will say I'm getting to this age, or maybe because I'm in ministry, mm-hmm. I need to do this, I need to. Nobody cares, so mm-hmm. at the end of the day, nobody cares. It's, it's you that will leave that person in the house. Like everybody will die daily and come for the wedding. I'm here to pass a price. But at the end of the day, I don't want to leave you with that person. I want that hint of desperation. You even miss God. Do you understand? Because when I think of that lady, I, I bust out, I'm not kidding, I don't like to think about it, but as you just mentioned it, I just remember, I will cry and 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 cry I will clean my tears, I, I don't like to listen to messaging, not that I don't like to listen yes, to I put, anytime I hear messaging, well, I keep, I see that girl, like I see her face, I see everything, so don't let, her, don't let position, well, pressure or anything, just God's, God's timing is always the best yeah. and when, when God brings something, whether it's marriage, job or anything, you would, you would um, I don't want to use the word peace because some people say I have peace but it's not really peace, you're just, because you're excited, you think you have peace but, it's not, but there's, there's no, when the Bible says he leads you besides still waters, it's a still water, it's not a troubled water, I you know when something because like this girl before before she got married, her friends, her personal, she, I wasn't really close to her, but I was kind of in her life type yeah. of thing. But the people that were really really close to her, when I was asking them, they were like, when they wanted to get married, she was only G three. Like I can't choose this girl because he would not like it. Mm-hmm. I cannot do this one. And so then I like, is this is not the person you want to mm-hmm. get married to. Why are you so scared and so afraid and all those type of things? So when God is in something, you yourself, everybody around you will know that. I was listening to Gloria Copeland yesterday and I said something that the blessing is visible. Mm-hmm. You can't hide the blessing mm-hmm. of God. So when they say something is blessed. Mm-hmm. People around can they may not talk, mm-hmm. but they can see that this thing God hand yeah. there inside. So wow. So thank you so much, Pastor yeah. Messi. Uh, if you've learned anything, you guys share in the comment section. And like I said, please, this is almost 42 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Check um, the description box. Um, you do a lot of worship on your channel. Yes, I do worship. And then I recently started entrepreneurship on the Bible. Oh, wow. And she can't think. We're going to do another video about entrepreneurship. I'm not sure she's going to be on this channel. It's going to be on my other business channel. So I'm going to put the link so you can watch it. So thank you so much, Pastor Messi. Thank, thank you, everybody. So please watching. subscribe to her channel if you've watched to this point. Please, how many subscribers do you have? 
up now? Um, I think about 100 now. Okay, let's 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 get to 300. Okay, so please subscribe. To her. Let's get to 500. Okay, so subscribe to her channel because you're going to get a lot of of um, spiritual. There was one worship that I watched. Mm -hmm. I don't even watch it all the time. I just came on YouTube and I was so. I'm not even saying it because she's here. I was really, really, really blessed. So thank you so much, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.